I'm not really going to go by that this morning, but it tells a story, so we need to we need to read it this morning. <laughs> Too many bookmarkers here these days. There we go. This is the word of God. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and, and saw the entrance. The stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came ran, running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in. He looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have taken him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus says, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Here in the reading, God's holy word may add a blessing to all that have ears to hear. Will you pray with me? Lord God, I do ask that you would be present with us here in this place. That you would fill us with the Holy Spirit. Lord, guide our thoughts and guide our hearts as we listen to your story. Let it be fresh and new this, this day. So that we may be moved to a new place in our relationship with you. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray, amen. I'm a very, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm a very visual kind of person. And so I like to create things in my mind uh, that helps me to follow a story or, or to, to understand a story a little better. And I believe that, that God has gifted me a, as a storyteller. Because anytime I can put a, a scripture into story, it seems to flow pretty well. So this morning I want you to join me in a mind exercise, if you will. And I'd like you to picture in your mind's eye that first Passion Week. What I mean by Passion Week is the arrival of Jesus Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Resurrection Day. I want you to picture in your mind's eye the people that are gathered there. People come from all over to bring sacrifices to the temple. To make sacrifices to God. And so there's noise. And there's people. And there's movement. Chaos, if you will. And as you find yourself in that, in that crowd, a young man approaches you. 
excuse me, pardon me, can, can you help me? I, I, I seem to have lost my family. I, I'm very confused. Seems like Jerusalem is so different this year. I, I've been to Jerusalem before. I'm not from this area. I'm from Chorazin. I, that's a town in Galilee. But this year, it seems like everyone is... Ah, it's hard for me to explain. I didn't expect this as I came to town. I brought my family over long and dusty roads to come to, to Jerusalem, to the temple, so that I could make sacrifices to my God. <laughs> but don't you know it? The day I arrived, there happened to be this guy named Jesus. <laughs> and people were making all kinds of fuss about him. This guy was riding on a donkey. And people were all around and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were putting palms on the ground and laying their coats before him. And, and you know what kept me from getting into town? I can't believe that I had to wait for all those people to get out of the way. My family was hungry. And we were tired. And we just wanted to get into town, make our sacrifices and go home. I don't know about this, Jesus. Certainly gets in the way a lot. And he sure makes a lot of confusion. Seems like every time, ever, ever since he's come into town, there's been this excitement or confusion or whatever you want to call it. You see, there seems to be two camps. There's, there's one that, that's really excited to have Jesus here and there's another camp that hate him and they want to get rid of him. They want to kill him. Oh, and the temple. Huh. What a mess that is. Ever since Jesus came in and, and toppled over the, the tables and the money changers and the money went everywhere. You know how hard it is for people like me to find good sacrificial lambs? If Jesus won't let us buy them there, what are we supposed to do? I just, I'm just not sure about this Jesus. He certainly has messed up my plans. <laughs> I wanted to come into town, do my thing, and go. I had it all neatly planned. I like things neat and tidy. But Jesus has certainly threw that out the window. Do you know much about Jesus? I've heard of him. I never had the opportunity no, I never took the opportunity to go, go see Jesus, even though sometimes he was nearby where I was staying. But always seems like I was too busy. You know, you know, my business, my business is really doing great these days. It's booming. And if I were to take time away from my business, well, I'd lose my, my income. I can't do that. And if I would leave early, my employees, I can't trust them to do what they're supposed to do. And, and man, until I get home, I'm just exhausted. My kids, my family, <laughs> got three kids now. They take a lot of time, you know, a lot of energy. I've got to help. I got to help take care of them. <laughs> with with worship on the Sabbath and, and all the demands on my life, I just didn't seem to find time to go to hear Jesus, except that one day. One day I did go out to the, the Sea of Galilee. but I got there late. And I couldn't hear. I was in the back and there was lots of people in front of me and I couldn't hear really well. I caught a few words and I couldn't see Jesus at all so I decided I was just going to leave and go home. This just wasn't worth it so away I went. I, I, I heard that I missed a, a miracle that day. But I don't think that I believe it. But then I begin to remember my teaching. See, I was a, a student of, of Rabbi Jacob in my youth. And I remember, I remember a reading in Isaiah 
a story about a prophet that foretold of a chosen one being sent to God, from God, to the people, the people of Israel. And I remember the prophecy from Isaiah. In it, in it Rabbi Jacob said, saying that God has been refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in distress, a shelter a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. Could Isaiah have been talking about this Jesus? Jesus has certainly scorned the rich and the prominent. And he's cared for the, the ill. He's even touched the leopards and we all know how dirty they are. They're not even allowed inside the city walls. Could it be? Could it be this Jesus? <laughs> Rabbi Jacob talked about silencing the voices. <laughs> the Pharisees have tried to trap this Jesus by coming in and asking him questions. But Jesus has answered them in such a way that when they were done there was no no words in their mouth it seems like that the people in the temple and Jesus are, are talking a different language it becomes so confusing oh what's that oh yes on Friday morning Friday morning I had heard that, that Jesus was on trial. I, I thought, trial? Why is, why is this man on trial? I had only heard good things about, about him healing people and, and forgiving sins. I'm not sure about that, but I hadn't heard anything that he should be on trial for or be arrested for. So I decided, since I hadn't taken that opportunity before, I'm going to go and check this Jesus out. But again, I got there too late. And I just caught a glimpse of Jesus as they chained him and they took them away. And when Jesus came back, when I saw him again, he was so bloodied and so beaten and I could hardly recognize him as the same man. And they were making him carry his own cross. This time, this time something drove me to push through the crowds to the side of the street where, where Jesus was walking. And then it happened. Right there in front of me, Jesus fell. And I bent down, too afraid to reach out because of the soldiers, what the soldiers might do. But Jesus then looked at me. I mean, he, he really looked at me. He, he looked into my eyes. But, but he didn't, it didn't just in my eyes. He looked right through my eyes into my heart. It was almost more than I could bear. But you know what? It wasn't anger that I saw in his eyes. It wasn't fear. It wasn't contempt. But it was compassion. Compassion. Compassion for me. I had to look away. I couldn't stand it anymore. I didn't understand compassion for me, one that had placed him on the cross. But I followed him. I followed him as he struggled to get to the top of the hill, Golgotha, the place of the skull. And then I heard them as they nailed his hands to the cross. And then they lifted him up. And the cross settled in to its resting place. The 
the sky, the sky turned dark. And there was people wailing. There were people crying over the loss of their, their loved one. There was people scoffing at Jesus. There were people ridiculing Jesus. Tell them, come down off of there and we'll believe you this time. And Jesus' eyes, they seem full of love. How can you love hanging on a cross? It was about mid-afternoon and we felt the earth tremble and Jesus died. Jesus, you can't die now. I, I, I've got too many questions to ask. You can't go now. I'm just starting. I... Am I too late again? I saw them take Jesus down off that cross. And they carried him away. They carried him away wrapped in linens. They couldn't do it proper because the Sabbath was coming and they weren't allowed to work on the Sabbath. So they took him to a brand new tomb and they laid him on the stone. And then they rolled the stone in front of the entrance of the tomb. What do we do now? What do we do now? The disciples scattered. They were afraid of what would happen. If they could kill Jesus, what are they going to do to them? So they, they hid behind closed doors and locked them. And then Saturday came. Oh, the burden of waiting. Not knowing what was going to happen. Feeling grieved because of, of this Jesus that, that promised us life. Now is gone. Oh, waiting to see what happened. But then, but then, Maybe this will help us understand the rest of the story.
News came from the ladies who had went out to prepare him that he was not there. The tomb was empty. And they said that, that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. It's not too late. Jesus is alive. I've not waited too long. Jesus is alive. Can you help me find my family? There's so much to tell them. Amen.